Hi everybody, Adrian Plus here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. So, this is number 141 in Sounding the Shallows. It is indeed, and I can't think of any significance whatsoever in 141, can you? Yes, I can think of eight things. No, <laughs> I can't. Somebody somewhere will, you can be sure. Mm. But no, nothing, nothing. Oh dear, what another week it's been really, hasn't it? I mean, not for us, but for people in Turkey and Syria. I mean, it's such a a horror story, isn't it, really? There have been a lot of these horror stories lately, uh-huh. haven't they? And of course, we've had another small shock wave in the UK this week, haven't mm. we? Um, well, be the, no, nothing compared with that, of course. No, but, but, but it, was, it was a real shock if you're talking about... Um, the leader of the SNP, the Scottish Nationalist Party. Well, of course I um, am, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Nicola Sturgeon. I suppose for those who aren't familiar with the politics in Scotland and England, she's she's been battling and battling and battling, particularly for independence for Scotland. Yes, and whatever you think about that, she's a remarkable politician she, and yeah, worked absolutely. her socks off yeah. for what she believed in. And she's had to face uh, a lot of difficulties. And some people do find her very difficult but I, I have to say I listened to her speech today um, and yeah. there's something in it that says to me she'd had enough as a person mm. and had come to the point and she's, she's, she said I knew always knew there could come a time when I'd know I'd, I'd couldn't go any further mm. and I, I mean that's, that's something that's worth happened. us talking about another time really isn't it is there a time when it's right to stop and of course what we've got in Turkey and in Syria is this desperately difficult decision when is it right to stop when is it right to give up hope when is it right to walk away from the rubble accepting the person you've loved is not coming back. I, I mean, don't know it's how you accept that because somebody this week, uh, remember, had been under there for a hundred days mm. and had survived. So mm. I can, I can, I think we would still be pulling the, yes, the rubble away. Absolutely, I'm sure we would. absolutely, until um, the big machinery comes. I mean, out of it, as always, there's been stories of incredible bravery, hasn't there? I mean, we mentioned the photo of the little girl holding her her tiny brother's head and we've heard of we've heard of lots of stories of people including the rescue i mean proper rescue services who there was one woman saying she doesn't think she'll ever get over it for the rest of her life mm. sitting with somebody uh, trapped under the rubble trying to help them to hang on in until yeah, yeah. hope came and sometimes of course hope not coming in time and um and so we've got all those brave stories, but there's also other stories that have come out, aren't there? Well, the the story of, of political corruption is s- staggering. I mean, mm. on a vast scale, something mm. to do with uh, people given being given the, the uh, permission to actually erect buildings that mm. were not proof against... Mm earthquakes mm. and that's the reason why some of these buildings have collapsed and mm. so many people have, have died because mm. i mean central to i mean one of the most famous stories that jesus told is about the wise man and the foolish man and, and i was thinking about that adrian and thinking that then it was self-built wasn't it you built your own house yes, it was, i mean yeah. maybe there were building firms i don't know yeah. but it was and the essence of the story is about how individually hmm. we need to build on the rock and yeah. dig deep yeah. into foundations well, jesus might have put a few up might not he as a, <laughs> as a carpenter well he might have done i suppose so, so yeah you know, he was always looking back at his his life i think when yeah. he told the stories so i suppose i was thinking that now with populations being so huge i mean there were no high-rise flats at the time i don't of think jesus. so no no if there no, were they'd have no. collapsed like pack of cards wouldn't they no. but i mean i don't know building is so much more complex now and and yet, are the principles the same, do you think? I mean... What do you mean in terms of buildings? I mean, yes. I think, uh, uh, yes, I mean, poor quality stuff. And we've seen what's happened over the last few years. People cut corners mm. and it means you have shaky or 
poorly protected buildings, buildings poorly protected yeah. from fire. I mean, I mean they, well, I mean, they did say, didn't they, that not all the buildings fell down. The properly built buildings mm. didn't immediately collapse in this earthquake. Mm. And then, as you say, we saw it with the fire and the cladding and the poor quality cladding. In and this country. Yeah. In this country, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, why, you know, why do you allow such a thing to take place? And I mean... It's because you make money out of it. You're using cheap stuff um, mm. as, a, as a builder and as a government, maybe, to get votes. Maybe well, it takes me back to the story we told ages ago about the lady uh, we met in Africa, or I do, can't remember whether you were there or not at that time, but the lady who'd become a cleaner. And she said, um, I said, what difference has it made to you becoming a Christian? And she said, she thought for a moment and said, well, I, I clean behind the furniture now as well as in front. Oh. And I think what this kind of thing shows is whatever people say publicly and politically, yes. it reveals where they actually are yeah. in their view of people yeah. and safety and and the proper treatment of, of the people they're responsible yeah. for. I, I mean, she I was think. building some good foundations, wasn't she, in doing that, in cleaning behind the furniture. Yeah. She was, nobody was going to notice. No. It was no. for her. She knew God could see behind the furniture. Yeah. And the and whole point her, about yeah. this, yes, is that nobody's going to see. You no. use poor quality yeah. uh, materials. You, you don't make things join up properly. You put in cheap windows, whatever. And as long as there isn't an earthquake, You're all okay. is well. And uh. I was thinking, you know, um, within the complexity of this, you're talking about poorly paid workers. You're always talking about poorly paid people needing to get their job, turning a blind eye, convincing mm. themselves that the buck doesn't stop with them. That it's somebody else's response. And of course, with the earthquake, that's fine because the buck stops with God, yes. you know, well, so they true. don't have to yeah. take it as... Yeah. as being their fault mm. it's the earthquake's fault it can't be their fault mm. yeah. so, well I think the same thing happens with people who would like to be workers for God and uh, I think over the years I've seen how um, foolishness can be encouraged, shortcuts yeah um, d being so keen to get people into the club, into the into the the kingdom, as they would put it, I mm. suppose, um, mm. that things aren't explained properly and people aren't challenged properly. Mm. Uh, mm. And I've well, we've, many we've, people we've talked drop often, away, don't yeah, they? Yeah, about this just come thing. Haven't that's we? right. We're, we're, when I was a teenager, I can remember someone saying at a meeting, "Just come, just come," mm. and I, I mm. understand that. But the thing I don't understand is that Jesus didn't say, "Just come." Um, he asked certain individuals to specifically to follow him mm. but he said if you want to really follow me you're going to have to count the cost mm. Mm. Um, and that's very very rarely mm. Um, mm. preached about yeah and I mean let's be honest it's it, we don't necessarily want the difficult questions we we want to give a pretty bland reply we there, there's a temptation to say yes everything will be okay I've mm. prayed for healing you'll be healed I've, those things are there Partly because they make us feel good. Yeah, is that true? What we I long mean? for, I think, uh, many of us, is to have someone who is honest with their own weakness. Yeah. Uh, rather than rather than um, role playing, somebody who knows what's going on and how it works and all the rest of it. And I, I sort of tried to explore this with this little sketch. It's only a little sketch, but it's two people. One has just become a Christian, and the other is is pretty determined not to. Um, pretend um, right. although she's tempted at times um, so, um, <laughs> okay. so right so you're you're the one who's just become a Christian right right now we didn't talk about the Holy Spirit did we so so what's the Holy Spirit oh uh, well, actually who is the Holy Spirit oh sorry <laughs> who is the Holy Spirit then well the Holy Spirit is the one who's uh, let me think is actually with us doing all the uh, God stuff here on earth and Jesus told his disciples he has to go back to heaven so that the Holy Spirit will be able to come and live inside us hmm. so the Holy Spirit is sort of Jesus but he's also not Jesus do you see what I mean no I don't do you know what you mean no I don't 
No, I don't. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Does anybody know. know what they mean? <laughs> no, it's a mystery. Oh, so um, well, okay. What does the Bible say about the Holy Spirit? Well, lots of things. For instance, in Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, is that the one just before the gynecological epistle? I beg your pardon. <laughs> the gynecological epistle, Paul's epistle to the Philippians. Yes, very funny. For instance, Sorry. in Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, mm. there's something about being filled with the Spirit instead of getting drunk. Oh, well, that's interesting. Feels a bit the same, does it? Well, actually, yes, it does a bit, I would imagine. So, God's against alcohol, is he? Well, I don't see how he can be, because he's responsible for hundreds of thousands of people lining up in church every Sunday morning to drink wine, and Jesus once turned gallons of water into wine at a wedding where they'd run out. as his first miracle, and I know some Christians don't like it. Well, I know too, because I've met some of them, and it nearly put me off for life. I mean, they seem to think he should have transformed the water into schlur, or better still turn the original wine into water yes. and then they'd have run out of wine before anyone had a chance to drink any so what are those people all about moving, moving on. on yes I, uh, um i tell you something else whenever people get filled with the spirit amazing things can happen yeah. well what does that mean filled with the spirit filled with the spirit yeah that's right filled with a person well, yes, yes. I mean, it, the Bible talks a lot about Jesus being filled with the Spirit, and every time that happened, whatever it is, there were all sorts of miracles or something really important got said. And sometimes the Holy Spirit uh, is uh, supposed to give you words when you don't know what to say. Uh, so you tell me not what anyone else says. I don't want to know what anyone else says. I don't want to know what the Bible says. I want to know what you tell me. What's mm. the Holy Spirit like? Right. Well, I can only tell you what I've found. I think he's kind okay. and wise mm. and actually a bit shocking sometimes. Very ingenious and actually... I have to say, best of all, mm. he seems to find a way when, well, when you've almost lost it, almost lost hope. Does that help? Yes, I think it does. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and it isn't just answering difficult questions. I mean, that's just part of it. I think, I think it's all the other stuff, you know to not cut corners. I mean, I think the wise man nowadays would be wise because of those the, somebody telling him the truth yeah. and encouraging and helping and using their experience and teaching somebody to persevere. I mean, that's teaching them how to create good foundations yeah, yeah. and being patient with them when they don't understand all these complicated things. Mm -hmm. And I think especially telling them they need to keep in contact with the governor. You know, that, that's, that's what I, you know, we're not talking about little self-built houses no, somewhere no. in a vast area. We're talking about living in the world but not of the world and ours is such a complex world yeah. that I think our responsibility is, is complex as well isn't it? Yeah it is and it's no good introducing a set of rules that take the place of encounter with God because those encounters are so different Yeah. Um, you, you really cannot say to anybody this is what will happen or this is what will change or this is what will, what will go no, on. So are there, con are there constants? I mean, what are the constants really that we can do? I mean, we know that the early church for a le very little while anyway, yeah. when people looked at them, they said, see how they love each other, which must have been odd because of the fact that that's what attracted so many people. So clearly it hadn't been like that before. Well, if you think of um, a community that was really very far from being rich, mm. they saw people selling land mm. to distribute, in order to distribute um, uh, money and food mm. and whatever was needed mm. to the group. Mm. Actually, some of them didn't, which uh, I won't go into that story <laughs> now. But um, So, yeah, it was... Uh, 
it, it was amazing to think about, mm. and it's still. Mm. You say what are the what are the what are the I remember what you said, but the the, the things you can be sure of. Mm. There is no doubt that seeing people looking after each other, yeah. making sure we're okay. Yeah, that is. Yeah, a good sign of something, whether it's Christian belief or whatever it is, yeah. has got to mean something. And and by contrast, seeing people indulging themselves, if you like, bitching about other people or gossiping or mm. or lacking loyalty, or you see leaders who who want the glory, you know, yeah. who want the votes, if you like, yeah. and who don't want any questions about their decisions and. I mean, you see all those things too, don't you? We had a, a poem sent to us this week, didn't we? Which just emphasises the need for those smaller things to be the best possible quality. That's right. The best yeah. material. I'll just, it's quite a long poem, so I'll just read a little bit of it. God says, you reach out to someone else and I'll reach out to you. There's so much suffering in this world, so much that you can do maybe just a phone call to a sad and lonely friend or whispered prayers for that one whose life is at an end. Sitting with someone who's sick, encouraging them with love, God sees all acts of kindness from his throne above. Counselling those whose lives are broken, whose faith seems hard to find, can change their focus on this life and greatly ease their mind. And every time you do reach out to someone who needs me, the blessings you receive yourself will help you clearly see that I'm always working still mm. to bring you hope and cheer. Every time you share my love with them, you'll feel me drawing near. So look around and try and find the ones who feel alone for as you share their pain with them, I'll help you heal your own. Yeah, there is certainly is a sense in which a conduit, if you become a conduit for love, mm -hmm. you are turned into the author of, you become a part of the author of that mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. That seems a bit difficult to understand mm -hmm. in itself, but I... A bit like the Pentecost. I, <laughs> I know. I no. wrote um, a, a thing once called Ten Things I Wish I'd Known Before Coming Christian. I was trying, going to try and find it, but I couldn't, unfortunately. But No, but you must look for it another time, because well, it is interesting for all of us to think... I wish I'd known. Yeah, well, that's right, because then you'll know with others. Mm. But I know some of them. I, I wish someone had told me how blinking difficult it is, mm. how high it is, how low it mm. is, um, mm. how it's one of the greatest dangers is to think you've sorted it, mm. that you've got it, you've got mm. it right. I was looking at another of the poems in um, uh, the book I've been reading of poetry that... Um, oh, what's the name's gone? That uh, Rowan Williams um, put together... And there's one about three kings and about what stops each of them. They reach a point where they stop understanding. Mm. And he says, you know, we have to face and, and accept the times when we, we arrive somewhere where we say, I've lost it. Mm. I don't know what I'm doing now. Mm. And mm. usually we try and pull people out of that with cliches or easy steps. Yeah. But actually, it could be the most creative thing we do mm. is to say, I'm not going to be... Um, impeded by this I'm going to see what happens mm. if I push round over through this mm. uh, and begin and, somewhere and else and often it is dealing with things right at the moment where within yourself things are starting to go wrong or you see it in someone else you think you know we were talking weren't we about you trailing spots of blood from a small cut on your toe uh, and how we, we were indeed, yes. having to clean it up really really quickly in order that our carpet survived and how in the early church they did that they did take things seriously they did say we can't just let it go on and hope it will all be all right mm. It would have been shaky foundations, but actually what they did was take everything that went wrong and say, right, we need to stop this build right now. Yeah, yeah. We need to sort it out before we go on. And I was thinking, Adrian, of a worse example of that, of your spots of blood on the carpet. I mm. don't know if you remember this, but it was years and forever ago when our boys were small, quite young, and we were going on holiday. We'd rented a house and we'd all driven there, but because we'd had to wait for them to finish school, we didn't arrive and 
until late in the evening. It was really, really dark. Mm. And we stopped the car outside. Very excited. Very Well, I was going to say our boys, boys were, were particularly excited, excited yeah. because, yeah. well, I'd like to think it was because they just wanted to explore, but I know them we know well enough they were excited, that yeah. they wanted to find out <laughs> where the bedrooms were and to bag yeah. the best one. And the dog was with us as well. Anyway, everybody piled out of the car, except me because I was turning the car off, and rushed into the house. And as I followed you all through, do you remember what had happened was there was a very tarry puddle, a puddle full of tar right next to the car and everybody, including the dog, had stepped mm, in this puddle. Right, yeah. So as I approached the house, which was a very lovely house with white carpeting everywhere, I saw these horrendous patches yeah. of tar going right the way up the stairs following the dog muddy yeah. paw prints put tarry paw prints yeah, i remember it very well indeed i don't know if it was you or me who suddenly screamed stop <laughs> and everybody stopped yes in exactly the place they'd reached yes and then and we, we had to find item. cleaning materials from everywhere mm. and the next hour was spent scrubbing the carpet yeah, but you fun, know it? it it was silly and it was but it was real we had to tackle it straight away mm. we couldn't let it be and think, oh, well, we'll deal with it later. Yeah. And I think, you know, when, when we see in ourselves, and we all know it, we all know it, that feeling of just fudging the issue or joining in with people who are not being very kind or whatever, that yeah. um, we're talking about not just our foundations and our growing a house that's of truth yeah. and love, but other people's. And in letting these things grow, yeah. we weaken uh, our churches like gossip is well, a cancer, yes, but isn't put, it? Putting up with stuff that really isn't helpful mm. and ways of thinking that mm. are lazy. Mm. I've, gosh, we've all done it. Well, of course we, we have. I don't want to think of all but, the times but I, I have. I think it could, it could have a profound effect. Um, I know it's a big subject actually isn't it's it? a I huge really subject we we'll, but we'd love to hear what you think about it so do get in touch yeah and uh, yeah and we'll see you next week the, sh the shocks and things lessen a little in the near future yeah it's uh, been very very upsetting indeed